Okay, welcome back. Today, today is all about Cursor and the fact that they have released their version 1.0, which is kind of crazy to think about the fact that it has been available to all of us for a while now. I've been using it for almost a year. Uh, it was still in beta and I have done so much of it already. So I'm really looking forward to this. I have not tested any of the new features, so buckle up and we'll talk about Cursor today. The most important things that they are promoting in their change log is the fact that you can use a bug bot, uh, which runs in your GitHub repository, which can actually help you fix bugs in your code base. So we will definitely look at it together. The other big change is the background agents. We will try and launch them, see if it works. You're going to get the whole experience. I have not tested it yet. Background agents allows you to run pretty much virtual machines with your agents. So we'll do a few tests to actually our website. So we will work on this website. I'm going to make some UI changes while the agent in the virtual machine is going to be implementing a, a thing that I want to try and implement. So we'll see how, how that goes. Jupyter notebooks are currently available uh, in Cursor, which is very interesting. Not entirely sure if we will get a chance to test this. Last but not least for today is going to be the MCP, one click, click install with an authentication support. We'll look at it together. We'll see how the workflow of adding new MCPs actually works. And yeah, all right. First one on the chopping block is called Bugbot. Uh, it's supposed to go through GitHub PRs, pull requests, uh, find any issues, and then suggest the fix. So we will first set it up and see how it goes. Okay, to set up Bugbot, uh, you need to go to cursor.com settings. So we'll go there. Okay, so that was that was pretty quick. I'm going to leave all of these off. Um, I've got a few errors in my code base. I'm going to make a comment and we'll see what happens in, in GitHub. Okay, so what I have here is a, a multimodal chat interface uh, using a Gemini Live API. I've made a few intentional errors here, as you can as you can see. So I'm going to see if actually cursor is going to pick up on those errors and suggest um, suggest changes. So let's just make a comment. Okay, here is our dude running here. Let's see. Okay, so it finished. It took probably a, a minute. I had, I believe, three um, intentional errors. And I think it found all of them. So this is the first one. Email, email template rendering fails. There it is. Fix in cursor. Okay, so it's asking me to open cursor now. So there we go. Okay, nice. So what you see here on the left hand side, uh, this is where my chat is. It actually actually has pre-populated the um, the content of what it, what needs to be fixed. So it actually shows the the line where the error is. Yeah, it, it is correct. Thirty six to thirty seven. And then which file? So obviously, that's gonna work. Uh, it's a very, very simple fix. So, yeah, I mean, that's done. Now the second one. It does exactly the same thing. It shows you where the error is, API name, and then it is gonna do the fix, and it should be fine. Hopefully. Okay, so I believe it is done. Okay, this is kind of wild. Why I was recording the, the previous section, the cursor released a new version, which is 1.1. Uh, and they have made quite a few changes, actually. So I'm going to walk you through the, the changes and how to set up the, the background agents now. So first thing that you have to do to get access to background agents is to turn the privacy mode off. I don't have anything that is sensitive in my repository, so I'm going to just select the option to still use privacy mode, but with storage. You have to turn the background agents on. So if you turn them on, you get a few more options. I do have a repository set up in GitHub already, so that's why you will see some of the information being pre-populated for me. The GitHub access is also enabled, and it shows you the repository you're going to be working with. The other option that you can set up is the uh, base environment, so you can 
start a, uh, a virtual machine from here as well by clicking on the setup machine and then runtime configuration. So each time an environment is, is, um, is started, you can specify what needs to happen next. And then secrets is, as you can imagine, it's your uh, environment uh, variables, uh, which you can also set up from here. Okay, so what I'm thinking of doing actually is uh, to ask the background agent to implement Excalidraw visual uh, infinite canvas. You might have seen me using it in previous videos. It's a pretty awesome application. Uh, feels very natural using it. So anyway, so we will try and implement Excalidraw by using the background agent while I'm going to be making some UI changes to, to other pages. Okay, in cursor, you have to click to, to kick off a new background agent on new background agent button. So we will do that. I just have a very simple, very lazy prompt here. I'm asking it to implement Excalidraw in our application. And I just kind of specified where I want the, the page to be created, which is going to be in draft Excalidraw. And then there's a page here, the page is empty currently. And then I did also uh, put in a URL to the documentation. The, the model that I can see being selected here is the Cloud4 Sonnet. The Opus one is the one that they recommend actually set, selecting, but it is probably too, too expensive for, for this task. So I'm just going to stick with the Sonnet one. The, the option to change um, the type of an agent is disabled because it's using the background agent. Let's send it off and see, see what happens. Okay, so it's in progress. It says new background agent set, setting up, integrate Excalidro into the app. What else can we do here? Okay, so we can expand and actually see what's happening. So it is starting a new virtual machine and I don't see any errors. So it kind of looks like it's, um, it's doing its thing. Startup completed. What is actually happening here is this is your window to a new virtual environment. So I'm not doing any of this. So this is actually running a, a kind of a virtual, virtual environment somewhere. So if we click on the cloud button here, we get a notification that says that the, I believe, yeah, it's finished. So it has integrated Excalidraw into the application. So let's click on it. Um, so what you see here is the virtual machine. So this is not my machine. Let's have a look at the chart history. Okay, so it says that it has actually created it. And if we look at the draft Excalidraw components, it has created a Excalidraw wrapper here. Okay, let's synchronize changes from the pull request and the branch and see if it works. Okay, so now if we go to our updraft Excalidraw folder, we see the component folder, which is the Excalidraw wrapper, and then the Excalidraw page. So if I were to, let me actually stop the environment and run the environment again. It's on the port 3000. Let's have a look. Okay, so let's refresh. And if I click on Excalidraw, it should load the implementation. So it might not be pretty, but let's see what happens. Compiling and there we go. So this is our Excalidraw, which you can obviously draw. This version is open source. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I mean, it took a minute, but that works very nice. That This is very, very good experience. So you can just imagine how many background agents you can actually have working for you uh, while you sleep or you do other things. Cursor has made it way easier for us now to add new MCPs. So to get access to a catalog, which is an ever growing catalog, and there's more and more MCPs every single day, uh, to access this, you need to go to Cursor Docs. So the URL is docs.cursor.com slash tools. I'm gonna put a URL in the description below. So once you're here, all you have to do is just click add Figma to Cursor or add Notion to Cursor or whatever else you want to do. So I'm going to do the, the Figma one, see what happens. So it says that it needs Figma running locally. That is correct. That's fine. I'll click continue. Continue. It's going to open. Okay, so it opened uh, the tools and integrations tab and it has the Figma 
URL pre-populated, which is the correct URL. I've used that MCP before, so this is gonna work. So if I'm gonna install, and if I'm gonna run my Figma application and enable an MCP server in Figma, let's have a look. I have this example that I've used in uh, a previous video. So let's see if we go to preferences, enable dev mode MCP server, this needs to be turned on. So if we go back to cursor, sometimes you have to disable and enable the MCP for the first time. So as you can see, it's enabled now. It shows you that it has the uh, access to four tools, get code, get variables, and so on. So, okay, one last thing for today is the, the new rule called memories, where you can actually ask cursor to remember a certain thing that you don't want cursor to do. Um, which could be very useful when you, let's say, in my case, I usually have the, the environment running and cursor almost always is trying to run an environment again, which obviously kicks off an error that the port is um, occupied. So it runs the environment in another port and so on. It's a little bit annoying. So you can actually specify that you can turn that option on first. So generate memories. Once this is on, you will be able to see all, all the memories in here, I haven't used that before, so I don't have any memories. So I'm gonna ask cursor to memorize, to not add, add any summary at the end. Um, again, sometimes you don't really need that because it takes tokens and uh, yeah, depends what you do. So I'm gonna just submit that and it should kick off kind of a, a message that is memorizing. Yeah, so it had memorized. So the memory has been updated. It gives you also a, an answer that it understands what to avoid. And if you paid attention in the middle, it has add that memory here. So the next time we ask cursor to make a change in the application, it should uh, invoke that memory as well and make, you know, just make sure that you don't get the, the summary. Uh, you can, you can imagine this being very powerful and maybe your workflow should be structured in a way if there's something that you don't like cursor doing, or you like cursor to do more of, you could specify that here instead of specifying that in a cursor rule, you could specify that in the cursor's memory. So just to recap, we looked at the memories, we looked at the background agents, and we um, asked the agent to integrate our Excalidro in this environment, uh, which is pretty amazing. Um, we didn't have to do anything with it. You can kick off as many background agents as you want. And yeah, just, you know, do whatever you care more. Just leave it overnight and come back to it in the morning and see see what happens. Yeah. So thanks again for watching. Um, check out the, the channel. I've got a few videos here as well. If you want to see something more of, uh, let me know as well. I want to make sure that this channel adds a little bit of a value when it comes to how we work with um, the AI collaborators or tools, especially when it comes to prototyping. Thank you again, and I will see you next time.